to Maranello, to Ferrari, to the new F175 for 2022. An interesting car, a very different looking car as well. And Craig Scarborough here to talk us through it. I mean, I think most of the cars that we've had this year, I've probably sketched as a concept over the winter thinking, mm, that's a direction someone could go. The Ferrari didn't come into this at all. I mean, there's, particularly with the side pod concept, which is really what we're talking about at this stage of the car, because it is so different. People are liking this to the Aston Martin, but it's actually a very different side pod concept, even though it has louvers. Ferrari approaches in a completely different way. And to be honest, I think everyone is out on terms of, does this work? <laughs> and what is it trying to do? I mean, I've got some theories. So if we look at the Ferrari, you can see that it's got a very wide, boxy side pod. But then the top, you have this kind of ridgeback design where you have a, a, a humped outer surface to the side pods that then goes into the Coke bottle area. And inside that dip, you then have all the louvers for the hot air to come out of the radiators. Never seen anything quite like this. Um, even when we went back to, you know, with the old cars, you used to have chimneys and, and louvers before. This is a quite a different way of doing things. And the way I see it is that they're trying to create this ridge back shape to direct airflow towards the rear wing, towards the beam wing. Um, and that is about as far as I've got. Then you look at the, the flanks of the side pods that are very flat. Uh, which is unusual. Normally you'd have a, a lot of undercut. There's a little sort of channel at the bottom, which is actually reminiscent of, I think, a 2001 or 2002 Jordan. I was trying to find some pictures. They did an update quite late. It's one of the first drawings I think I ever did in Formula One. Um, but what they're trying to do, a bit like McLaren, a little bit like Mercedes, is at the front, you're trying to push air outwards to get lateral expansion of the airflow, create you know, downforce under the front of the car. But then you would then expect the cut side pods to undercut all the way back to the diffuser, but they don't do that. Now, someone has actually already put this into CFD uh, on the F1technical.net website, and they said that it reduced some drag because it was shielding the rear wing slightly. Again, it improves airflow to the uh, the beam wing, and you know you do get a little undercut, undercut at the back. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. This is you know way outside my comfort zone, but it's interesting. And the Ferrari have put this on is because they've thought the figures are right. Now, the only other thing I was questioning about this, and I did some drawings on Twitter, is normally the radiators inside the car are sat like this, facing the airflow. Um, looking at the shape of that side pod, it doesn't seem to work. And I wonder if they actually lifted them up vertically, maybe canted mm. them in slightly, a bit like this. And the air is going out and then inwards, which is the reverse of what you would normally do. I can't wait to see this car dismantled in the pits to see what's going on with these side pods, with the suspension and with the uh, engine as well. Well, of the of the big three teams, they're the team with the most capability in terms of wind tunnel test time. Uh, and I guess I guess also with the engine power unit handicap they've had to live with for the last whatever it is, two years, they thought we might as well just go as radical as we can mm -hmm. on the arrow and, and really push it. And this is what's come out. But it's interesting to hear you say that. It's, it's the first time I think I've ever heard you say the jury's out. You're not exactly sure how this is going to work. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's like nothing we've ever seen before. No, um, and that's uh, it's a bit of a worry, actually. When you look at that, there's a shot. I mean, the, the way they've done those veins and so forth in, on the pods, it's a beautiful looking finished product, I guess, sitting in the in the showroom there. Well, exactly. But, I mean, it does kind of bring to mind some Ferrari road cars, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it I does. I wouldn't be surprised if the, uh, you know, the next uh, fast car will have you know some of those treatments on it because mm. you know it reflects the f1 heritage is there any uh, um, let's talk about the power unit because there was an upgrade to the to the hybrid side of it back end of last year and it seemed to work pretty well first of all talk us through that and then let's look and see what maybe they've been able to do over the winter to take things further so ferrari over the past few years have been kind of playing catch up and we had the whole issue with the fuel mm. flow saga and that they were handicapped um, all the sort of way through 2020. Um, so Ferrari still have the turbo at the back of the engine. Uh, they have an intercooler, an air, air water intercooler at the front of the engine, which is, yeah, again, different from everybody else. Um, they've been clawing their way back in terms of the, the V6 turbo performance. Uh, but we know midway through last year that they had a big hybrid upgrade, particularly around the battery. Mm -hmm. And this really made a huge amount of difference to the car. And that's really what allowed them to accelerate literally past the, the, the McLarens in the second half of last season. Uh, or grab them that, you know, all important third position. So Ferrari clearly now need to look at that V6 engine and the turbo. Now, there's lots of rumours 
and we have to be very careful with rumours about Ferrari because more often than not that they're wrong, uh, is that they're going to go to the split turbo, which we know that Honda and uh, Mercedes have, and potentially now it looks like Alpine have as well. There's lots of uh, evidence to back the Alpine switch over. Ferrari may or may not have. Uh, we have to remember that the Italian press said that this car was going to have Paul Rod front suspension, and it doesn't. Um, interestingly, they came up with that rumour hours after I said that McLaren were going to run uh, Paul Rod front suspension, and suddenly they heard the, the rumours from Ferrari, but that won't be too cynical. It is an interesting one. one, yeah, definitely. Yes. So they've got to work on uh, the V6 engine because th that is really what gives you the, the mm. peak power. Mm. And we know Ferrari have been lacking in peak power, particularly uh, obviously with the fuel flow saga, but uh, through last year their engine was improving, but it still lacked outright power. But how much work can they actually do on that in terms so, of... For yeah, this year, by the uh, beginning of March, which is not far away, they have to homologate the majority of the power unit, except for, if I remember correctly, the battery and the MG UK. Please correct me if I'm wrong there, mm. but I know the V6 engine Sounds right. has to be, and the turbo has to be um, mm. homologated. Now, they can change everything in that engine prior to that date. Right. So, as you say, now they've made the stated aim that they're being very aggressive, very radical, very innovative with this engine. Now, what that means in engineering terms and things that we may understand inside the engine, is it the split turbo? Is it something more well, in the packaging of the engine or is it more in the combustion? Which is probably And what the engine concerned. engineers at Ferrari are saying is that the bulk of their work over the winter on the internal combustion engine has been packaging for the radical aerodynamic mm. package. So, of yeah. course... That may well be true, but it may that also be true yeah, that, that, you know, the split turbo is coming in there. Yeah, so exactly. They've got to work on the combustion yeah. side and get that turbocharger working with it and therefore with the with the hybrid system. Now, there is a risk there because once the engine's homologated in March, it then runs through to the last race of 2025. So you could think, well, that's a big risk. But if you have unreliability, as we've seen this over the recent years where the engines have been frozen, you can make changes for reliability reasons. Um, obviously, Ferrari don't want to have blown engines. They don't want to be replacing lots of power unit parts and upgrading it. But they do have that get out. And that does kind of slightly soften you know, the amount of risk that they maybe would want to take because they know that they can fix it through this year. And it still gives them several years of performance with this engine. I suppose the other question is how effective they are now aerodynamically in terms of the tunnel correlation and the work they do with their own tunnel and how we're going to see that this and this car i mean it's sufficiently this radical is the test yeah this yes. is the test isn't it yes i mean i think the ferrari chassis was working quite well yeah um, through last year it was the first time after all the engine debacle that they could actually really design the aero to match the known upcoming engine performance and it seemed to work mm -hmm. but to go with something so bold they have to have confidence as yeah. you say in that wind tunnel and cfd correlation and i've got no reason to believe that they wouldn't have that correlation of course if this turns out to be a bit of a lemon because of the side pods, for example, then it would be very difficult for them to then claw back um, a new car, particularly with the wind tunnel CFD restrictions, the budget restrictions and the time, plus everyone marching on with development of their cars.